Hello, this is Dr. Wallach, and as we move into project two, you're going to be using some of these hardware synthesizers here in the studio. And so this video is designed to introduce you how to connect uh, Ableton Live to these hardware synthesizers. And I'm going to cover three things. One, how to record audio into session view. Two, how to record audio into arrangement view. And then three, how to take MIDI that's in Ableton Live and use it to actually control our Eurorack synthesizer over here. So uh, getting started with this, uh, everything is connected to our uh, mixer down here in the rack, and the mixer is connected to these uh, speakers that you see on either side of the iMac over here, okay? Uh, that includes the Eurorack system, the Synthi system, uh, and then also uh, new this year, our Roland uh, Rhythm Composer that's sitting right on top of the rack, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, they're connected uh, in order uh, where one and two is the Eurorack, three and four is the Synthi, and then number five is going to be the Rhythm Composer, the TR-808, okay? Um, the Mac output is also going through the mixer as well. The first thing you're going to need to do when you uh, get started is actually turn on the system. and Everything is connected to this power sequencer that's at the top of the rack. You're going to see an on-off switch that's all the way to the right, um, and if you flip it to the up position, it'll start uh, turning on pieces of the system. It's designed to actually turn things on in order in order to uh, preserve your audio system. So it turns on things uh, 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 with the sound sources first and then eventually turns on your speakers uh, separately. Um, that also includes the audio interface that's here in the rack and so you're going to find that that actually needs to be turned on before you get to launching Ableton. So make sure you turn on this rack because it's going to power everything up before you actually launch Ableton. Uh, but if you now launch Ableton once everything's on uh, and you'll know that everything's on by the fact that all three lights uh, are lit up here where it says delay one, two, three. Once you've got Ableton running, uh, you will need to dial in your, your sound uh, setup here on the mixer, okay? Uh, it's best to start with everything down, uh, and these gray sliders are your level controls for your individual tracks on the mixer. Uh, best to start with everything down and slowly work your way up. Uh, so you can start with the, the speaker level and turn it up just a little bit. Um, I've got it currently set at uh, negative 20 just to get started, um, but if I hit play on my session here, I can actually play a little bit of sound first from the Eurorack, and then the Synthi, which I have doing a, a kind of a drone, and then the Rhythm Composer. Okay, so I've got my Synthi and my, okay. So I can now use this mixer in order to uh, set the levels on them and I can listen to them. I actually don't need live running in order to hear the sound from these synths, uh, but uh, eventually you're gonna need to record the sound from these uh, hardware synthesizers into live in order to work on project two. How do you do that? Uh, first things first, uh, after live is running, uh, you wanna go into settings and you wanna confirm that it's actually using the right audio interface. So. Under settings or preferences, you're going to find uh, the name Fireface UFX Roman numeral 2. Uh, that's what you want your audio input and output set to that device. Uh, so just make sure that that's uh, set properly, okay? Um, that should allow you to send sound from Ableton to uh, the uh, speakers as well. So if you already have sound set up in Ableton, um, as I've done here, I've got just a clip set up on this track. I'm uh, sending it out to uh, master, and master is configured to go to channels uh, one and two of the output. Those are actually tied into the mixer here, uh, where it, uh, the, the track that's labeled Mac out, okay? So that's the output from our Macintosh, okay? Um, so that would allow you to listen back to a previous set that you've got recorded, or once you've gathered materials into live, you've got sound flowing from Ableton through the audio interface into the mixer, okay? So a word about our audio interface. We've got the audio interface here at the top of the rack, okay? Just below that is actually a patch bay that is configured, uh, and you're gonna notice some cables coming out of the front of these. You do not wanna remove these, because that's actually how we are enabling you to be able to record the signal from these different hardware synthesizers. We're eff effectively, before it goes into the mixer, we're splitting the signal, sending it uh, both to the audio interface and to the mixer so that it can be recorded 
uh, en route before it goes to the speakers, okay? So these, these cables sticking out of the front here are actually functional, so um, make sure that they stay put, make sure that they stay yellow, red, blue, orange, green here, okay? Otherwise you'll mess up the sequence of things. Um, but if you are, uh, now that you've got sound coming out of Ableton, how do we get sound into Ableton, okay? Uh, you're gonna need a new audio track, and on that audio track, you wanna take the input-output settings and actually uh, check here where it says audio from, uh, and the second, it should say external in on the first drop-down list, but on the second one, you've got these pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Uh, those numbers will match to the numbers that are on the, the mixer down below. So the Eurorack is gonna be set up on one and two, the Synthi on three and four, and the, uh, the Roland on five. So if you pick a pair, you're gonna get a stereo recording, one, two, but a stereo recording from one, two. If I turn this up now, okay, I should be able to uh, play uh, some sound from my Eurorack here. And, and remember I mentioned starting low and working your way up. Uh, I did the opposite of that, so. Uh, <clears throat> Make sure you start with the level low uh, and uh, don't uh, oh, blow out your speakers here. Okay. And now the level on the mixer is going to be actually independent from the level that you're going to be recording into live. So it's important to look on the channel on live and look at the input uh, monitor. Okay. Once you record enabled the track, look at the input monitor and see what, where that level is. You want a good, strong, healthy level, but you don't want it to be too loud. That level will actually be controlled on the synthesizer itself, okay? And will have be independent from the mixer, okay? We'll go over that in class as far as where to find the level, but on the Eurorack, the outs module here is the last stop. That's the actual module that's sending sound over to the mixer, okay? So make sure you control your level there to get a good level. Um, but once you've got it, set up and you're confident you got a uh, signal coming through on the monitor here, uh, you can simply hit the record option in one of these clip slots and it should start recording. You even get a little animation of your waveform uh, as it's uh, recording things. When you're ready to stop, you can simply hit stop at the bottom of the track and now I've got a recording of the waveform, okay? If I turn down my Eurorack now and turn my Mac back up and hit play on that clip. There's a little bit of sound that I just recorded from the Eurorack into Ableton Live into a given clip slot, okay? All right, so that's recording into session view. How do we record into arrangement view? The process is actually pretty similar, okay? Assuming that you've already gone through and selected the RME Fireface as your audio interface for both input and output, uh, you simply go into arrangement view and you've got similar settings here on the, on the top of the track here where you can select an external in uh, and you can also select a pair uh, like three and four. Uh, and so this time I'm actually gonna play uh, from my Synthi, which is currently producing this lovely uh, drone for me, okay? Uh, but again, the level on this is going to be controlled uh, with the level actually on the synthesizer over here. And again, we're going to go over where to find levels on these, but that's where you want to actually set the level uh, going into Ableton Live is on the actual synthesizer itself, okay? Uh, but once you've got a good level showing on your uh, input meters, as well as a, uh, you've got the track record enabled, you should be able to simply start uh, recording at the on your transport and have it actually record into arrangement view for you in real time. And once you're happy with what you've got recorded, you can hit stop. And now it gives me a view of the clip, but that's a way that you could actually record something a little bit uh, longer duration and have it uh, play in within your arrangement view and manipulate it there. Once another, so one more word here is that once it's in live, it's just another piece of audio. Uh, you can process it, you can chop it up, you can resequence it, you can do all the things that you were doing with clips before in uh, live with these uh, clips that you're gonna be gathering from our hardware synthesizers over here, okay? The last thing you might wanna do is actually uh, send MIDI from, the, from Ableton Live to our Eurorack system. Um, and we do have a, an, a module 
uh, here called the MIDI 3 module that can actually convert MIDI messages into continuous voltage, which is what our, our synthesizers understand and what they, what they actually use for controlling uh, things like pitch, things like envelope, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and it's, it's connected by this MIDI cable, uh, which is actually going into the back of the hardware interface, okay? Uh, so you don't need to make any extra cable connections here, but you do need to make sure you set your settings uh, properly inside of Live. So uh, once again, you want to go to the settings uh, for Live and click on the Link Tempo MIDI tab. Um, down here at the bottom where it says MIDI ports, uh, look for the out ports. Uh, and there are actually two ports. There's one on the front and one on the back. We're using the one on the back, which is port one. And you want to check this track column right here. Uh, and make sure that it actually has uh, check marks all the way down this, and that's going to enable uh, sending MIDI out from the uh, from live in or through the hardware interface to our Eurorack module over here. Okay, um, and so that's what you want to make sure you have set up. Uh, once you have that set up for the system for Ableton Live as a whole, you need to go onto your individual track and you'll find on an, uh, the MIDI track that you want to send to the hardware synthesizers, you want to drop down this MIDI 2 option at the bottom of the, the track I.O. settings or input-output settings. Uh, and you'll find that there's an option here that says USB MIDI device, okay? Uh, and fortunately, it's not more specifically named as the RME, but the USB MIDI device is actually the... Uh, hardware setting uh, for a uh, hardware name for this uh, device and sending it out from the fryer face to the Euro rack. Uh, you want to select that and make sure it doesn't say no input, which is I believe is the default you're going to find. Uh, but once you do that, if you start playing MIDI on the track, let me mute some of these other tracks for me here. Okay. Okay. So I've got uh, MIDI now. Uh, coming out of this, that's what my signal indicator is letting me know on this. Uh, uh, this this uh, signal uh, graph is showing me here on this uh, MIDI uh, track is actually showing me that it's sending MIDI information out, okay? Uh, but I'm not hearing anything because I, I don't have my Eurorack turned up. So if I turn up my Eurorack now, there's that little scale sequence that I had uh, playing through that. And again, if I go back to... I'll turn it down so I don't have to talk so loud over it. Um, if I go back to my audio input uh, and now make sure that I have something, uh, an audio track s selected with input one and two, uh, I can uh, record enable the track. I can check check my levels to make sure I'm getting a good healthy level into that track. And then I can just simply record into one of my clip slots. And now I'm recording my uh, MIDI playable sequence, be, MIDI being played from live through the Eurorack, and now I'm recording the audio back into live, okay? Uh, and so that's really the three uh, things that you're going to need to be able to control uh, is uh, one, recording audio straight into session view, uh, two, recording audio straight into arrangement view, and then three, being able to send MIDI from Ableton to the Eurorack and having it uh, then generate MIDI or generate audio that you then record back into Ableton Live. Uh, but that should give you a good rundown of how things work with our hardware synthesizers and connecting them into Ableton Live for Project 2.